I'm so excited to share my October setup with you. Our flower of the world theme this month is the hibiscus from Hawaii, and I can't wait to share a friendly ghost cover page and so much more. Hey friends, what's up? Welcome back. My name is Shada Campbell and it's time for the October plan with me. This year, my theme for my journal is flowers of the world. Each month we focus on a different flower, a different country for September. We did sunflowers from Ukraine and it's gonna be hard to beat this setup. This was absolutely one of my favorite cover pages. It's so simple and striking. We did a beautiful patterned calendar page. And we stuck with one of my favorite weekly layouts, which is this two page spread, two week spread that has a Dutch door in the middle for lots and lots of notes and to do lists. And here's the week that we're in right now, end of September. So moving along for October, our flower is going to be hibiscus from Hawaii, USA. And let's just get into it because I love October. I love fall and the spooky season. Our Hibiscus October cover page features a friendly ghosty, a friendly ghost who loves flowers. So we're sketching out the shape of the ghost with this rounded head and then put a little line across the head there and we're going to draw a really simple flower crown. The ghost illustration is so striking, but it's very, very simple. It's just this sort of conical shape with a few lines to indicate the sheet. We'll sketch a crescent moon behind her. I find it's easiest to draw a circle first and then put the crescent in. And she's also got all these hibiscus flowers blossoming behind her. So I like to start that sketch with a guide, put a circle where each flower will eventually sit. And then to frame the entire illustration, we're going to put this large cloud shape and that will be the sky. With our guide done, let's try drawing hibiscus together. In the circle, I place an X with one extra line, and that gives me the guide for where each petal will sit. So we'll place the petals, and then you're going to finish it with that funny hibiscus stamen that's kind of long and sticks out from the flower. Creating a detailed illustration like this can be made very approachable by just simply doing that guide first. You know how big each flower is going to be and how large they are. Now you go and add the flowers in, and then once you're confident with your illustration, we can start going over everything in pen. I'm using the 0.7 millimeter nib in the Mulatto Black Liner. These are my favorite fine liners right now. And just a reminder, you can shop all my supplies, including my Archer and Olive notebook. Simply check the video description for links, support this channel, and get the same stuff as me. Okay, a quick rundown of how to draw the hibiscus again. When I do it in pen, I often like to start with the stamen. Then I go around and begin adding the petals, wiggle that pen a little bit, make sure they're not too smooth, and add a little bit of line shading at the center. That really shows the coloring and the uh, trumpet shape of the hibiscus. Let's complete our contour drawing. I'm going to add a bunch of hibiscus flowers of different sizes, and I'm framing them with lots of little leaves. I'll also add a few marigolds to the mix. Marigolds are a little hint at a video that's coming up on the channel very soon. If you can guess what the marigold video will be about or what it will be celebrating, first one to guess wins an Archer and Olive notebook. So comment below with your guess, why are we going to draw marigolds? What would the topic of that video be? I love a little guessing game. So comment below, first person to get it will receive a comment back from me letting them know that you are the winner. Friends, I just want to also remind you that if you don't want to draw this pretty little ghosty, you don't have time, you can get my cover page as a printable. You can just cut it out and paste it in your own notebook. That is available for everyone supporting me on Patreon. Remember, it's only two bucks a month or $22 for the year, and you get extra content every week. Last week, it was a worksheet to go with the fig doodles and next week I think we have uh, oh the November bonus video is coming up next week so that's the kind of stuff you can expect over there I'm filling in the black sky area I used a koi brush pen for this any brush pen will do or if you're really in a pinch you can use your fine liner but it just takes forever and once that's done we've got this really beautiful striking black and white illustration and all I want to do now is simply Simply add a bit of line shading. The line shading for me, it just helps to 
um, make everything look a little more three-dimensional. It adds to the conical shape of the flower and we can add a little more detail on some of the leaves with some thin lines. Now line shading is not for everybody and I recently released a video called to shade or not to shade and that's where we get into kind of defining what your illustration style is. So check that video out if you're into uh, pen and ink illustration like this. It's, it's a good one. Okay, let's finish up the line shading here by simply adding some lines to the sheet. I think a few thin lines is going to give the look of the, the uh, folds of the sheet and just help the ghost really pop. Once that's done, we're going to take our white gel pen. This is my favorite gel pen. This is the Uniball Signo. It's the best by far. And just a reminder, all supplies are linked in the video description. We're going to use the gel pen to connect all of the little leaves and flowers, kind of complete the floral illustration by adding branches and some additional tiny leaves. And then you guessed it, we'll also add stars to our night sky. And the whole thing is really starting to come together now. I love these black and white illustrations because you can kind of like sink into them. You can keep adding leaves or a little more line shading. Right now I'm bringing some black leaves down to the bottom of the illustration to sort of carry the blackness of the sky towards the lower part of the drawing. But uh, if you like to draw or doodle for mental health or just to kind of help you relax and unwind, I find sketches like these to be really fun because you do it all in pencil first and then you can kind of just get lost in the drawing a little when you add the pen. Remember, don't worry about getting it perfect. It's just for fun. It's just for your journal. No one else ever has to see it, right? So you really can just take this time for yourself and try to do something good for yourself today. I find doodling and illustrating is a really good way to turn my brain off and just kind of get outside myself a little bit. You know, when you're just having all these thoughts and you're like, oh, I can't get away from myself. Art is sometimes a way for me to take a little break from myself when I'm not feeling quite the way I would like. Okay, I'll get back to that thought, but Right now, <laughs> we're going to flip over here and we're going to create our month at a glance page, which sits under the cover page. For this one, I grabbed some pink paper. You could use any color. And we're just drawing three hibiscus, uh, you know, start with the guide, three circles, maybe make the center one a little larger. Then you're going to draw those hibiscus in just the way we talked about earlier in the video. Uh, once you're happy with the pencil sketch, we'll go over everything in pen and suddenly you've got this nice little sort of half wreath that's so pretty and you've got the color from the paper and all we need to do is cut that out and paste it into our notebook. Getting back to my thought from a moment ago there, just in case you're wondering, I am trying to speak more openly on the channel about my mental health. I've got a few videos out talking about my struggle with addiction and just my mental health in general. So check those out if that's at all of interest to you. Uh, but something that I've found really powerful is this idea that you are not your thoughts. So for me, sometimes I just feel so uncomfortable. Like I have I just don't feel the way I want to. Like, I just feel ugh, and that's not very descriptive. But when I feel that way, it's super powerful for me to remember that I'm not my thoughts. And that's all well and good, but it's like, how do you get away from your thoughts, from yourself, basically? And I actually feel like a little bit of drawing or doodling is a good way for me to escape myself sometimes, if that makes sense. Like I can kind of turn my brain off or almost press a bit of a reset button. Walking is very powerful as well, but I will be the first to admit that going for a walk or opening a sketchbook, it can feel very daunting when you're not feeling well. But if there's some way you can make a deal with yourself, that's how I do it. It's like a deal with myself. Okay, you're not feeling good. You're gonna go light a candle. You're gonna make a cup of tea and you're just gonna draw for 15 minutes. It's like you, who doesn't have 15 minutes to kind of potentially make yourself feel a lot better. So just a thought, that's what I like to do. Let's keep on keep it on. I'm going to create a two page calendar spread this month as we go into fall. This is my busy season on the YouTube channel. Uh, we're planning lots of exciting videos for autumn and winter and Christmas and back to school, all that stuff. 
I use my calendar to keep track of all the YouTube videos and Patreon content, so it's good to have a double page spread here. I want to carry my little ghost theme onto the calendar, of course, as I make a small illustration that will sit above my notes section. And this cute, sweet, flower-loving little ghosty, she's a friendly ghost who loves hibiscus flowers. <laughs> she's going to sit up here. It's just that funny, lumpy shape for the ghost. Three circles below and then turn those circles into hibiscus. And then we'll block off kind of a rectangular area and you can write notes at the top. This is a really simple way to create a pretty illustration illustration. And not everybody has the time to do illustrations in your journal like this. I totally get that. For me, this is the stuff that I do if I have the time. This is my way of like relaxing, as I said, getting of getting out of my own head. So you could totally just do like a nice rectangle over here and then write a pretty title of notes. You do not have to add in a big illustration, but if you're trying to relax, this will only take you about 20 minutes. And as I said, just draw the lumpy ghost, three circles underneath, sketch the hibiscus in pencil first. And then by the time you're doing everything in pen and marker, you can just totally get lost in it and relax and enjoy the process. We'll complete this uh, notes illustration with a little bit of line shading, add that contrast um, by darkening some of the leaves, and then use the gel pen to add the stars to the night sky. Our calendar looks good. I simply added the October title over here, I just sketched kind of a block letter, a very perfectly imperfect block letter in pencil, went over it with my fine liner, and a great way to make a block lettering uh, look really good when maybe you're not so great at it is to add a shadow on one side. That way, if one letter is a little thicker or thinner, it's a really effective way to kind of hide those little imperfections. And finally, I'm just going to um, finish it up with a tiny bit of line shading just to darken it ever so slightly. I really love this calendar spread and uh, frankly I didn't think I was going to be able to top the September illustration just obviously we all have our own favorite cover pages and September was a favorite but the ghost I'm loving her okay finishing up my layout for the month we're going to do our weekly spread as I said in the beginning of the video I'm sticking with the same one I, I know it's not exciting but it's truly my favorite right now and I can't get away from her we're doing a, a grid of six squares on each side of the page, and then you erase the upper left square and the bottom right, go over everything in pen, add the days of the week and the dates, little calendar, add a bit of highlighter or color to the, um, to the grid, and everything just comes together so easily. That's what I really love. And if you have 20 minutes to do this, well, you've set yourself up for two whole weeks, which is wonderful when you're busy. I want to finish up by drawing some hibiscus in color. It just feels like it wouldn't be really celebrating the flower. I know we did focus on our pretty little ghosty a lot, but let's focus on the flower just in case you don't want a ghost in your layout. Here, we've already done this together. We start with the circle to show how large the flower is. Then you're going to draw in five petals. If you need to do lines first to show yourself where each petal goes, do that. And then we add the stamen and then we frame everything with leaves. Now I like to quickly erase a lot of my pencil sketch before I start going over it with marker. That's optional. You don't have to do that. Just it makes it nice and clean. I'm going to color in all of the petals with a nice pink uh, and then I will take a darker pink and we'll just do some line shading just like we did with the fine liners but with dark pink marker. That really shows the coloring of this beautiful flower. Grab a nice warm medium green and begin coloring in all those leaves. Leaves are just a great way to make a light colored flower really pop off of that white page. We'll use a little bit of yellow or orange or brown to do the stamen and you can always shade the leaves with a darker green. Now this is, again is optional, but if you want, you can add that sketchy black line. I definitely want to frame the flowers at least with a dark line and maybe even a little line shading. I'm addicted to adding the fine liner. 
Uh, but that's pretty much it. So there is a more colorful hibiscus illustration if, um, if color is your thing. This is my monthly or half of the month to-do list in the middle there. And then uh, I just realized I didn't even write the week of uh, over here, but I just like to add a little illustration or like the date in that bottom corner. That's it, guys. She's all done. Tell me in the comments, do you love this layout as much as I do, or should we switch it up for November? Here's a quick flip through. As I said, I didn't think I could top the September cover page because it's a personal favorite, but I really love our friendly ghost. And she's carried on to pretty much every page. There's a bit of color, a bit of black and white, all the good stuff. Reminder to my patrons, go grab your printable color cover page after today's video. It's available on patreon.com slash Shada Campbell. Thanks for watching. Comment below with your guests for the Marigold video, and I'll see you soon with a new tutorial.